Okay, so um, for this video, uh, we're going to focus on hemopoiesis. And more specifically, erythropoiesis, which is uh, the stimulation uh, and formation of red blood cells. And this is regulated by erythropoietin, also known as EPO. OK, so now in the body, um, oxygen levels are actually sensed by the kidneys. Uh, they don't really know why it's the kidneys, but they think it might be because of just the high blood flow. They can sense the oxygen levels of the kidneys. And when O2 becomes low, uh, EPO is released. And so this EPO then goes in to stimulate the bone marrow to make red blood cells. And how does this happen? Um, so on the cell membrane, there is the receptor, the EPO receptor. Okay, and I'm going to draw two of them, because actually when EPO binds to these receptors, they can dimerize, so they can come together and they come close enough, which um, allows um, and it attracts uh, these protein uh, tyrosine kinases, which is uh, JAX, so which stands for Janus kinase. So these JAX proteins come in, and uh, they can now bind, and they so now these JAX come in and bind, and once they are bound, they can they autophosphorylate each other, and basically they're all activated. Um, now that they are activated, so now they're phosphorylated, these tyrosine kinases attract a protein known as STAT5. So STAT stands for signal transducers and activators of transcription. Um, so they come in and they actually have a specific region that can come in and bind um, to these tyrosine kinases. So this region on there is the S. H2 region, um, so SH2 binding domain, um, and you'll find this actually on a lot of signaling proteins. This binding domain is a highly conserved binding domain, and it can go and it binds there. The STAT5 gets phosphorylated, and now that it's phosphorylated, there'll actually be two of them, they can dimerize as well. And once they dimerize, they go into the nucleus, and they can activate transcription, which regulates erythropoiesis. Um, another molecule that is involved is the SHC molecule. Um, so the SHC can become phosphorylated. And what it does, once it's phosphorylated, it um, can regulate the formation of GRB2SOS complex. This complex then catalyzes RAS, which can go on to activate the mitogen activating protein kinase uh, pathway. And uh, so a mitogen is basically any chemical that activates mitosis. So this pathway is for mitosis, thus it regulates proliferation. So that's MAPK from the SHC protein. OK. Um, when insulin binds, it also can form insulin um, receptor substrates, and there's both one and two. There's two kinds. Uh, these can become phosphorylated, which can go on to activate both MAPK through the GRB2 SOS complex. And it can also activate another pathway, so that's for proliferation. 
and it can also activate um, the phosphatidyl inosol 3 kinase pathway. And this is basically to prevent apoptosis. And I'll talk about this pathway. So phosphatidyl inositol, um, there's uh, the phosphatidyl inositol 4,5-bisphosphate. Uh, and this kinase, so can kinase, um, phosphorylates it. So then it becomes um, phosphatidyl 345-triphosphate. Triphosphate, also known as PIP3. And then uh, PIP3 is actually it's a lipid that can go in and it activates other uh, regulatory proteins, one of which is protein kinase B, which can then go in to activate genes that stop um, apoptosis. So that's how it prevents uh, cell death. Okay. Um, now to regulate uh, EPO, there is a protein known as GHC. Um, sorry, I don't think it's GHC. Um, no, it's H, sorry, it's HCP, uh, which is hemopoietic cell phosphatase. This um, can dephosphorylate JAX, um, which basically stops the whole cascade effect. Um, and so EPO is actually only activated for about 30 minutes. Uh, one other thing to mention is there is a mutation in... Um, in the JAX gene that has been found. And uh, so this mutation is called V617F. Um, and so this mutation, what it actually does is it allows JAK to um, autophosphorylate itself even without the binding of EPO. So with it autophosphorylated, it's already activated. It can activate STAT which then activates proliferation. So people with this mutation uh, have increased production of uh, red blood cells, also known as polycythemia, cythemia vera. OK, so this is actually a generalized uh, disease. It can be caused by a number of different mechanisms. But this mutation has been correlated to about 90% of the illnesses. So a way, if you can do genetic testing and you find out that this is actually the cause of polycythemia uh, vera, what they can do is they have a drug that inhibits the STAT protein. And by inhibiting the STAT protein, you stop the proliferation of red blood cells.